this is the Team Sunshine Arena featuring Cardfight Empire's Josh, Meta Discussion Podcast. We are here with our team captain, Nick. Hi. Our recorder and co-captains, Coram. Sup. And myself. We have JC. Hi. And founder Alex. Ooh, what's up, guys? And, of course, Cardfight Empire's Josh. Woo! So, <laughs> we're going to be talking about what we think sets are going to do to current meta for the remaining tournaments in America, excluding Japanese meta, because we've already seen that and talked about that on part one. Yep. Um, so, the following tournaments have happened already, and that was Canada's and... Canada, Toronto's, and Indianapolis' tournaments. So the next one that comes up for set 11 would be Costa Rica with their San Jose regional, um, New York Albany's, uh, Houston, Texas, and Santiago, <laughs> Chile's before the next set drops. So those four regionals are happening um, from set 11. So, what do you guys think tops are going to be like for that? Uh, I predict that in Costa Rica, um... Costa Rica always has weird tops as well. That's yeah, true. Yeah. It'd be a coin flip. Because that's where we got the two gold paladin tops of last year. Yeah. It, Wasn't it the host? Is that where the handscape deck tops as well? That was for Sylph. I'm 80% sure. But I think it was, uh, but yeah, pretty much at this point. Because I think it's the only Spanish event on the list. Yeah, in, in Costa Rica, I uh, predict a, a Murakumo win. And then for Albany, I predict yeah. a Dark Face win. <laughs> and then for the next Jacksonville, I predict a handsome <laughs> black man win. <laughs> Skipping like six events. Nice. Yeah. 10 out of 10. I really hope Dark Face tops. I, I Funny hope fact, it won't, JC. Oh, <laughs> so if you want machinis, <laughs> I take the brakes out of your car. Do I get both your tickets? <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, not sure. Nick, I think, I think uh, as a special vote, is Nick should tell his story about getting second place. <laughs> That's if he wants to tell it on there. I have no problem would, putting it up. <laughs> it would be also great if you topped again and Nick got second place again. Because we have a joke within the team now that Nick has to win first and third to get all the trophies. Oh my god. Yeah. And, I, and we have agreed to scoop to him, or at least I have, so that he can get his third place trophy. I just found it funny that, like, the trophies were in shapes of a tear. So I told, I, t I told uh, Zavani, the, the, the Bermuda player, and when, when he didn't want to take a picture because he was really salty about losing, I was like, well, at least the tear in your head fits the tear in your heart. Oh, dang. <laughs> wow. Savage. <laughs> Damn, son. But, but but the funny thing is, like, me and Nick got bigger tears. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, does, how does that work? Does, does it mean, like, the time you invested in this game to only get so far, or... Like, what? So, like, the higher you get in the game, the sadder, the sadder you get. Yeah. <laughs> the more, the more BS you have to deal with. In the, uh, in the beam. I will say um, a really interesting thing about the events happening. Um, Texas event, the day one hard fight event, is also having a luck and logic competitive event. I thought that oh, game shit. was dead. <laughs> say, people play. But I just want to like throw a side note in there for Bushy Road if they're listening <laughs> and tell them that. They should start being like Bushiro Japan and start having Beyblade side events. Oh, with Beyblade with Beyblade themed uh, or card fight themed Beyblades like they do in Japan right now. That would be pretty cool. I'd, I'd do it. Bring back I'd, play. I'd be like fidget spinners. That's Dragoborn, Alex. Flying. Yeah, I, I play. Yeah. We should have Beyblades at our opponents and like hope they wedge into their skin. So, 
basically leading up after set 11, no one really cares because nothing really changes. And then after set 12 is the events everyone cares about, which is the Richmond Canada event, the Jackson Bowl event. Well, I think that, um, the 11, like on a serious note, um, yeah. I think Blasters will be doing yep. very, very well. As yeah. Well for day. Um, honestly, like, this week, I have to go to a $500 tournament. Shout out to that if you're in the throbbing area of Georgia. Um, but, like, that's going to be, like, right at the cusp of set 11 coming out. So mm -hmm. I'm going to face a lot of seven le set 11 decks coming out. Um, yeah, I think, you will. Uh, Amaruda needs more support from Genesis. Like, you, they, I mean, it's good. It's okay. It's a balanced deck. But you know what I say about balance in this game? It's balanced, it ain't good enough. So, like, literally, that deck is balanced. Um, needs to be unbalanced. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be unbalanced. Let me call my boy host. See how much we can break I mean, there, there is the whole thing of the two Genesis tops since set, that set came out in Japan have been Finra Wiseman, not a well, Wiseman. I really just feel like Bushy Road at this point is troll, because, like, when they made Luard, they were like, huh, this this skill is not, you know, it's not too powerful at all for free stride. And then it turned out to be too strong <laughs> for free stride. Yeah. And then and then literally they made a Cho Cho Tira. And so it's like a Luard a cost that makes it bad. And then they made Amaruda. <laughs> and so they're just giving all these like Mini Luards, I should call them, to clans, but actually giving them cost, real cost, and uh, yeah, because they have real cost, they're not as great. <laughs> like I don't even think that Amaruda would be top tier if she just had, like, let's say that you have three Revelation cards in the soul, she just gets a stride for free. I don't even yeah. think that like yeah. it would be an amazing deck then. Um, they really have to like step their game up with like the the units of revelation in my opinion um they probably need some better units for revelation regard uh the domination deck uh, will probably do decent I, I can only say that it will do okay in my opinion because um yeah they don't get really really good until uh post set 12 or, yeah until set 12 and even then they're not really really good compared to everyone else they're just you know they're there they're playable yeah, which is good because against uh, Narukami, you can go into Mukuro and make them attack their field without getting rid of that, uh, or without having to target that that bastard child card. And that's important. Yeah, exactly, and that's really important. Uh, honestly, like, against anything, like, Blasters, against Luar, that's gonna be so hurtful. Like, Mukuro just making Luar attack your entire board. Yeah, losing Luar's song stride is really big. Yeah, and then you literally, like, cannot guard it. So no matter what, it's a board wipe. And with them getting two drive checks, like, that's basically how people should, could, should consider it because, like, the ruling is that when they're dominating your Vanguard, you have no Vanguard to base your guard off of. Therefore, mm -hmm. you cannot guard at all. Yeah. You cannot, yeah. Guard. you cannot, like, regular guard. You can't anything. So any unit that you have on the board is automatically a lost cause when you throw hits the board. Unless, uh with aqua force i did something pretty cool is i had a full board with aqua force um in my gb8 video that i just recently made mm -hmm. yeah. and then uh, my opponent went into mukuro and then they dominated my title assault and made it attack my vanguard and then i g guarded the title assault with the new g guard and made all my rear guards gain the ability that they cannot be hit <laughs> so then then he mukuro me and, and i only lost title assault and it was great and I did that two turns in a row. Because <laughs> somehow he did not learn to not use the on stride dominance. Yeah. <laughs> also, Skyros really um, hurts that. Because Skyros gives, gives think, everything in your front row resist. That doesn't matter. Yeah, but I mean, that doesn't matter when they're making attack your. Yeah, but you can't target the Vanguard. For no yeah, target. Wait, really? Like, you can't. If your Vanguard has resist, you can't target yeah. it, which is it, 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 oh, for Does Mercuro target? That's the yeah. question, and I'm looking at it right now. Um, dominate all of your opponent's Vanguards is stand. 
So yeah, I think it doesn't like, uh, target, it just says do it. Browser. Yeah. Yeah. It's this domination uh, target. Which it's not. It's just it just says do it. <laughs> yeah, I for a second I, you gave me hope. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's hope. still pretty good for Lord Vanguards because it's like you can't do it. Cause you have different clans on your board and Chaos Breaker frowns on that. Amon reverse frowns on that. Bunch of other yeah. cards frown on that. <laughs> the only way you could get around was if dominate the keyword itself has anything at the choose, in which case you could be like, actually, dominate does choose, so you can't do it. But I would have to like look at the rules for that. I, don't want to do that right now. I also want to mention in GBT 12, it's kind of a small thing, but I'm happy that Neo Nectar finally got a res. <laughs> yeah, they did. That's relevant ish. I mean, I wish the bloom wasn't once per turn, but. I'm not complaining. I guess at least it's, it's uh, at least it's a resist unit now. But like the whole thing about it being a resist unit is it almost doesn't even matter because like against things like Kagero and Night Rose and stuff like that that retire your stuff during the battle phase, you just wait till next turn and, and recycle and do it again. So it almost doesn't matter. Yeah. Unless, unless you're just gonna play two of those, and then your opponent's playing Narc with me, that's when it matters. Because you don't want to get your stuff bound. But as long as it's not bound, no problem, I guess. Yep. True sure enough. I would say we'll probably see DIOTK top at the first turn of America after set 11 drops, mm -hmm. along with blasters, because. People probably aren't prepared to be the over the DIOTK matchup. We played with our local two cover video uh, about it, and it was pretty disgusting. I went undefeated until top and just kind of played against Nick, and I couldn't win. Because Chaos Breaker. Yep. Yeah, fair. Um, yeah, I. I. Yes, I. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, if Chaos Breaker strides before you, then uh, then they're at an advantage. But if they don't, like you can still DK them. Yeah. You you basically just play the. I mean, it's sad, but play the grade two with gate game with them, and they're most likely gonna ride up to grade three, and then you try to OTK them. The only. The only difficult thing about that is because I was talking with Nick with this is um when it it, it hurts either way because it's such a meticulous matchup because you you either have to be play the patient game which is you keep chaos breaker maybe at one damage you don't call front row rear guards and then you try to do the full OTK which is I'm gonna try and hit you seven times and kill you then and pray you don't have two perfect guards or G guards big enough to stop them. Or you do try to go very aggressive and you hope that you can put them to five so that you can finish them at that point. It's a very diff it's probably one of the hardest well, matchups for the deck. <laughs> in my opinion, um, it will be a lot different because we're talking about when we actually for Tiger Jaeger, uh, which would spawn the um, oh, yeah. A deck in general. So since we're talking about getting where Tiger Jaeger and GBC 11, which is when we're getting all the rest of the stuff. I think that would be a much easier matchup for our darker regulars because they can try to go for the OTK and put the, um, put the Chaos Player at high damage. And then every turn after that, they can just go for like Shara, Stride, Guild Arise, or the Restander mm -hmm. and not care um, about their rear guards as much. Especially because of um, Sullivan's skill. To like, as long as you make sure that you have 15 soul, you're pretty good defensively no matter what team you're yeah. in. <laughs> so, True. it's like, just just play the matchup right, and I think that it's in your in the uh, DI player's favor. Mm -hmm. Especially now that they have a resander, like, resanders are so good against Joker. Yep. Especially so, when they don't have to rely on rear guards. So, at least in America, where are we planning to see Genesis go after this? Uh... So, I think that there was a huge stigma about, like, Genesis being on the rise, like, but not because of GBT-11 or GBT-12, 
but it was supposed to be because of head around getting hit to one. But since that didn't happen over here, yep. I don't predict them going anywhere, but staying where they are on the planet Cray. <laughs> because <Yeah. laughs> literally, like, I don't know, a head around having a presence, like, gear is only, like, going to get stronger and stronger from here, like, yeah. and the fact that even if you uh, do the pure Zodiac Time Beast build in GBC-12, like, even that can still run multiple header around to not care. So, I think that's their weakness, and people can still run it, but, like, honestly, dude, with all the stuff around, like, Narukami, um, Kagero, like, literally the, the three biggest bad matchups for it are getting popular. Yeah, and the head around not getting hit, like you said, and getting all these other things getting popular, it does really hurt the deck. Right, exactly. So, it really hurts the deck to, um, for them to, even if they double Wiseman, like, there's a big chance that, uh, it, even if your opponent's playing, like, Narukami or something, like, some people nowadays play the Sweep Command build, which I don't know if you guys know about that. Yep. In yeah. In Georgia, the Sweep Command build is, like, very popular. Like, at least two to three people play it. And so, um, as far as the Sweep Command build, like, you just lose that matchup. Like, there's no way that I can see a Wiseman player winning against Sweep Command. Like, there's just not. Especially if they run the card that says, uh, when this unit intercepts, uh... Oh, the Infernal Ride Fader? Yeah, yeah, the, Yeah, I know exactly what card you're talking about. Infernal Ride Fader. 8k grade 2. 8k grade 2 intercept, counterblast 2 Ride Fader, uh, kill a thing. Yeah, exactly, it's so... disgusting. It was one of the reasons I wanted to build Ride Faders back when I just started. I was like, oh, these cards are really cool. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's a mention with doing the superior superior right shenanigans, which is equivalent to like a perfect guard. Yeah, so it's like I have both def I have both defensive and offensive plays. Oh boy. I'm also like thinking about like all the little side decks and like side effects that will come out of uh, GBT11. And um, actually, believe it or not, I've been uh, playtesting with uh, this guy, like one of my friends that lives in Japan right now. And um, he's been playing a Tsukiyomi build. Um, what? So basically how that works is they get this new card. Uh, set 12? Yeah, yeah, set 12, set 12. Okay. He said so, set 11, that was like four. Oh, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. I yeah, the new Tsukiyomi cards though? But, um... I don't think it's a new Tsukiyomi card, but they get a card... Oh yeah, yeah, it is a new Tsukiyomi card. So it's that card that says when it's discarded for Pride, if you have a Vanguard with Tsukiyomi in its name, on yes. Vanguard or in Soul, you draw a card, you choose one of your noble race units, and then it gets plus 5,000 power, and then yes. when you give an on hit that says, uh, choose a grade three from your drop zone and return it to your hand. So basically, like, that card with Iki Kishima is so good. Oh, like don't like this. <laughs> like you on hit, you draw a card, and then you return the same grade three that lets you do that to your hand. Um, also, you have like your stat going the Tsukiyomi because everything in that deck is just like dra either draws you a card or looks at the top and puts things yeah. at the bottom. So, so like, you know, if that. you're like a very meticulous player, a very meticulous smart player, like you know where your stack is and you know like the composition of your deck. Like if you can misaki it, I call it, where you have like a great memory and you can even remember like the number of stack in your car, that you remember exactly what is where, it allows you to have like an insane control over the game. As long as you're not uh, playing against gears and they don't like header around you or something after you build a stack. Because, uh, as we learned from the show, that's also another use of head around. Yep. When your opponent demiurgs you, or does something like Tsukiyomi stack, or stacks anything in general, you can make them shuffle their deck forcefully. As yep. your chronicle can do that. So Pushes up glasses, jokes on you, my entire deck is now triggers. It <laughs> doesn't even matter. <laughs> exactly. That's how I feel with, uh, Luar, to be honest. Like, in the late late game when you're doing like the the combo with the GB8, um, 
where you like pump your Grosnays to like insane numbers. Mm -hmm. They head around one of your Grosnays, and you're like, huh, I called a trigger out from this, but everything else besides that Grosnay I just put back as a trigger. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Disgusting. But yeah, um, I think the Tsukiyomi build will, like, it's, it's amazing to me how, or it, it's as much amazing as it is disgusting, but it literally, Iki Kishima has made every single OTT build relevant. Like, it's pulled it out of a joke, a meme territory. It was yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, literally, even Scarlet Witch Coco decks, I feel like. Uh, Especially when they have that other stride for Witch Dex that's like, you, like I pitch this, if you don't do what I say, I deal you a damage. Yeah, Mimi. Yeah. Uh, uh, Floral Witch Master Mimi, whenever yep. placed on Vanguard Circle, if you have a Witch Heart, you can discard a win in your hand. Uh, the only like thing that prohibits that is having to discard the Witch card. Mm -hmm. So you have to run like a lot of Witch cards in your deck instead of some optimal cards. Because a lot of the Witch cards are like not optimal. Yeah. But... <laughs> If you run like a witch deck, like even for fun, and you like, let's say that you Mimi multiple times, like Mimi's so hurtful to your opponent when they're at five damage. Did you just go into Mimi? Like now that you have Iki Kishima, you'll probably still go into Iki Kishima when they're yeah. at five damage, just so that they don't have the possibility of even guarding. Cause like that makes more cards in their hand useless than uh, Mimi does. Cause Mimi yeah. also will like give them the choice to this card. Um, and since they get to choose what to discard, it doesn't make their hand as useless. Um, it'd be a lot different if it said, like, look at your opponent's hand and discard two cards or something. I like that but, card's like the ultimate I'm sorry, the ultimate <laughs> apology letter. Yeah, exactly. And then the thing that I also like about it is if you take a damage from its skill, um, the trigger effect is nullified, so you can't six damage heal out of it. So you just know that if you can't pay the cost, you die. Yep. It's so, so Like, even VMAX can be healed out of. Yeah. Play a deck that puts a lot of heal triggers back, and then you're low in deck, and then they VMAX you. You're like, okay, I hope you don't crit me. <laughs> but even if they do, you could just uh, PG their Vanguard when VMAX attacks. And then uh, you should be good from there. Yeah. So, it looks like pretty much meta is going to be no longer a triangle, or at least expanding past the triangle that it has been. We're getting, is, like, maybe, at least out of set 11, we're getting maybe a pentagon minimum. Pentagon. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yup, yup. Thank Thank God. The, we've only had two tournaments up to this point, but we have two top eights at 16 decks, and eight of them are Gear Chronicle. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's time for you to come off your throne. <laughs> uh -huh. am, am I the only one who wants About, Gear Chronicle to be yeah, dethroned? <laughs> like, the thing is, Gears are still going to be topping, it's just that other decks will also have a chance to top now. Yep. Yeah. It's just other decks are also getting stronger, but Gears is like. The thing is, Gears has already had this power spike and it's been holding onto it for a long time. And now that every now that they've gotten two sets of kind of minimalistic support, it's just kind of like, oh, we have another way to play the game now. Um, and everything else has got the time to catch up. Basically, we're going to see more things. So the longer Gears that they get support after this, the more chance we have of seeing a more diverse meta and chance of Gears not being in the top seats. Well, the. Uh... The interesting thing about that is, uh, about Gear Chronicle, is that they're kind of going to be on a tear for a little bit, and then I believe that they will quote unquote die out, right? So here, here's what I mean by that. So um, with GBT11 releasing this week, um, there is like the regular Gear Chronicle build that has been winning that you don't really have to change. Um, and it can still win because of its insane advantage and forever living and all the things that your kind of ball offers multi-packs if you don't check a trigger, etc. Um, 
And then there is a new build emerging from GBT11 uh, that is actually topped slash won some tournaments in Japan, where it is the Demiurg deck, the Demiurg Zodiac time use deck that focuses on getting Demiurg like literally turn two or turn three of your stride turns. Um, and it allows you, it, I think it runs like one or two Demiurg. Um, I've even seen like three in some builds. So it is a completely Demiurg um, focused deck and I think it's very good. You can cheese your opponent out of the win if they don't know what's going on or they don't know what to do. Especially because uh, the new Zodiac Time Beast card um, that's coming out, when you, it's on stride skill, gives your Vanguard um, plus 1000 for every card that you have bound. So if you're getting ready to use Demiurg, you get like plus 12k, plus 13k, plus 14k to Demiurg, and then Demiurg's attacking with Guard Restrict, and then you stack triggers on your deck knowingly. Um, I think it can be a really destructive deck. Yeah, uh, Drastic Colossus. Yeah. So, uh, Drastic Colossus, really good with Demiurg. Um, and then come BT12, of course, there'll be like the Zodiac Time Beast deck. Um, that can either be the what the regular gear deck is now with slight modifications to add like some Zodiac Time Beast triggers and stuff like that, or mm -hmm. as we've seen um, in this Japanese tournament that just came out, um, it can just be a pure Zodiac Time Beast build with no Melum, no History Maker, and nowhere water, and that can still carry it to a win um, with Gear Next being so good and uh, all the new support being so good. But then uh, when we got the the um, the announcement from Bushiroad, I guess it wasn't really an announcement, but like the live stream Bushiroad that showed the uh, the support for the next six months, uh, Gear Chronicle was not in there at all. Yeah, which so, is surprising. Depending on how the next six months go, they could die out to stronger support, especially with stuff like the Zoo Nation becoming stronger. Because like it honestly scares me for like the Zoo Nation is one of my favorite nations, if not my favorite nation. And it honestly scares me for uh, Great Nature, Neo Nectar, and Megas to get support. Because they're all like clans that like, if you tip them over just a domino, you're creating a monster. Um, in my opinion. I don't want to go yeah. back to a machining meta, please. Yeah. Please. <laughs> I remember whenever uh, mixed all the machinings, every box from we went to, I played machine because that deck was like no counterplay. Yeah. People couldn't figure out that, oh, I just, I just lose. Oh, yeah. I, I remember when I had the uh, Dark Face machining deck and I built my core out of machining cards so that I could still use, um, use machining destroyer. And so I would ride, um, against some matchups where I see that they didn't have that great of a hand, I would straight up ride the Machining Legion, then stride, play the Machining faces or, or the pieces to the board, use Machining Destroyer, and then they would draw and legitimately pass turn. And then I would draw again, use Machining Destroyer again, they would draw, pass turn again. And then after that, I would draw and I would stride to Sun Beetle. And since they haven't used drive checks for like the past few turns, unless they happen to have a PG, my stun beetle will hit, and that's pretty much the end of the game, in my opinion, when stun beetle gets the hit. Disgusting. Yeah, time. <laughs> Best on hit in the game. I've, I've hit someone with stun beetle and not one. Oh, really? I, I did it against a. I played against literally the worst matchup for machinings. I was playing pure machinings versus a guy that was running three different. all the break rides of Kagura deck. So he was just like, I rewrite grade three every turn, it doesn't matter. Oh, fair. Well, I mean, the thing about um, Dark Face that makes it so good is that they can't re I, Yeah. It's honestly what I want. For, like, I know that it's like wishing death to a meta. <laughs> but that's honestly what I want for them out of the zoos to like a card that has a requirement that doesn't have to hit that stuns their vanguard and they can't ride. Or, or maybe another card that makes them unable to ride by some cost or something. I a dark face, a dark face GB2 that says e even if a card is written over or called over, um, it's hard the circle, the position of the card in the circle cannot change. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, they'll release a new grade three dark face and 
the grade 3 dark face will have a GB2 that says any card that is stunned cannot be, like, nothing can be placed in that rear guard circle. Yeah. I hate that. Or it has to take the orientation of the previous unit there, like said earlier. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like uh, if it took the previous orientation. Just because, like, I like drawing from Luar, uh, from Dark Faces on Stride Skill. So, if they made a new on Stride Skill that was kind of similar, um, and rested units and let you draw cards, because that seems like the theme right now, unless they decide to change up Dark Device and make some interesting things with it. Um, like, honestly, I'd rather them just, uh not make people not play cards in the same circle that will like stop some things like gear chronicle so up track because they won't be able to uh target the card that's rested because of dark faces kill um the dark face grade four it basically makes the circle block right. exactly so with mega colony being one of those decks that's literally just like link joker in a way like they can't make link joker good and not make megas good I mean, no, I say that, that, but they can. I wonder if... So we're talking about the Zoo Nation booster. I wonder if the Zoo Nation booster means anything for the future of, like, how support will be dealt out. Like, are we going to move to a nation booster-style thing with set 13 being the last main set we have? I think that, um... I think that it's going to define, like... It, I think it has something strongly to do with, uh... Vanguard GZ, the new series yeah. that's coming out come October or something like that that they announced during the uh, the live stream. I think that it's gonna have something strongly to do with like nations plan. Um, so they'll probably have like a nation booster for like every single nation uh, for a while, and then they. They might even do like things like really large nations like United Sanctuary and in two. two parts. Yeah. yeah. So, I can see that totally. Which would give them a lot of like time to set it up nicely so that they make sure they're not releasing like too much broken stuff at once. Like they could if they split United Sanctuary in two, instead of doing Shadow Paladin, Gold Paladin, and Royals all at the same time, because all yeah. those are likely to be strong, they could probably do like OTT Royals in Genesis. And then like Shadow Paladin gold. Uh, and Gold Angels. Yeah, and Angels, exactly. Yeah. We still haven't gotten our next um next mechanic confirmed yet too. It was domination, right? No, I meant like as far as like stride. Everyone gets in. Yeah. yeah. Wait, our our next two? Mechanic. Normally by this time oh, it's been yeah, like yeah. uh like what a year, year and a half. Normally we get like another overarching mechanic every clan's having gonna have access to. I think uh, by doing that, like I think they did that with G guarding. I think they just did that a little early this year, in my opinion. Like they might consider G guarding a whole new like thing to add to the deck, so they might not be giving us a newer version until GZ actually starts. Um, because with GZ starting, like. Usually when the new series starts, they have like the first episode teach the game plus the new mechanic. Uh, I, that's usually the pattern of things. I wonder if we're gonna get something like clan cards. What do you mean by that? Um, or sorry, nation cards, where it's just a card that can be played in any deck of a nation. Ooh, that would sound very interesting. multi clanning <laughs> Yeah, similarly how to, um, they did Mean Streets of Gadget, I think, or some expansion where they had, here's the Card you can play in these three classes, these three classes, these three classes. Something like that for a nation or setting up, like um, Josh was saying, how they can split up the made a nation booster for like, United Sanctuary, splitting up the three clans, doing that for the three different clans, and just saying this card you can play in these three clans, like a card that's like you can play in Angel Feather Genesis and OTT, and these three you can play in the Paladin and stuff like that. So you're talking about that. like a, some, a multi card thing, kind of like the Garbor card that can be a gold yes. paladin and a royal paladin. But only within nations themselves. Only within nations. So I, like I can see how that might get thing. like... I can see how that might be really broken. Like, that could get really broken really fast. Like, especially with like United Sanctuary. 
biggest nation, well, they would automatically have an advantage with nation cards. Well, the thing is, is that they wouldn't say rules like, oh, now you can combine, sh like, gold and shadow paladin in the same deck. No, it would be more like they print new cards now, and they have that ability on them. It's not like, oh, I can combine Chaos Breaker with Mega Colony, or Chaos Breaker and Gears, that'd be busted. Well, yeah, that, what I'm saying about that, like, I know that, like, that's what you guys were saying, but mm -hmm. I'm saying, like, depending on the card's effect, like, it could get, like, really nice. In, yeah, in a, in a Bushy Road standpoint, like, if they make a card, usually, now, I'm not, like, dissing Bushy Road or anything, but usually, <laughs> like, whenever Bushy Road makes a card, sometimes it has unexpected consequences for the meta that they did not see, um, aka TikTok Worker or Water. All those cards. AK. AK. Yeah, they. they AKA kind of Odysseus. <laughs> right. It's, it's because, like, obviously when they're designing a card, like, I would imagine that they have, like, a design team that discusses how healthy the card is for the game before releasing it. And then if they decide that it's a pretty healthy card, but then a player um, obviously has an infinite amount of times on their hand, like, especially Jap players, like, they just come up with so many builds that I just don't even know how they have the time to sit there and make but i guess on the same token like i spend about 15 hours of my day playing card fight as well for my channel so it's like yeah when, when you have all the time in the world and you can just sit and look at the same cards and say i could make this card really good and then you look at all the rest of the cards that the clan has access to and then you make a broken deck off of it and the bushy road's like well didn't see this coming because they legitimately did not see it coming <laughs> When they because they I feel like they release cards separately and then when players combine them with each other they're like oh that's pretty broken you can even tell sometimes because you'll see like so for example a lot of people don't know this but on the Japanese site um, for Bushy Road Bushy Road actually has um, builds of decks that they give you like so they give the Japanese yeah. players like a, um, a yeah. free build of the deck it shows you how to play it how it shows you how to build for it yeah right exactly so it shows you like a, a build that the bushiro design team literally gives you to try out the deck and then if you change the deck from there like that's on you but bushiro gives you like what they believe to be a good deck for that deck um or the new support coming out so you can even see like sometimes on there like some of the combos that people use nowadays like they're not projected on there at all like back when uh, Melum and TikTok Worker came out, like, they were in the deck, but, like, not in the same deck as each other. Uh, so, even, like, the ruling that came out with, like, Melum and TikTok Worker's interaction being able to still get a green zero, like, a lot of people were mad about that. But when a player argued it, he was like, you know, technically this is mandatory still, and I still have to get my grade zero. So... When you get a grade zero and a grade two off of it, like Bushiro, it's like, yeah, that's kind of fair. But at the same time, they didn't project that. It's not like Yu-Gi-Oh! where they come out with a Yu-Gi-Oh! card and then there's automatically a rolling page on it. Um, how yeah. it interacts with other cards. like Plus, uh, a thing that Konami needs to do, or Konami, huh? Um, huh? A thing that Bushiro needs to do in the coming years probably is actually create a rolling page. Like, they, just a straight-up ruling website or something. I will say, for their new IP, Dragoborn, by the way, shout out to Dragoborn, I love that game, they're literally, they've released their combat of rules as soon as the set drop, and they have FAQs on every card interaction that you might think is dicey. <laughs> oh, like, wow. In, yeah, like, oh my god, I went, I, I was like, man, after we played one day, I was just like, I wonder if there's actually, like, anything on this, or if it's just, like, Vanguard and there's nothing, and I went on, and... I was amazed. I sat there and read things for like three and a half hours. And my, was like, wow, this is fucking crazy. My Angelica ruling. Yay. <laughs> I had to email them about the Angelica ruling because uh, I was like 100% sure that wasn't true. But there are like 20. So Angelica is a really weird part of that game and it has seven FAQ posts on how Angelica works. Card must be broken. It's pretty good. Especially. It's, not, it's not broken, but it's just a lot of weird interaction stuff with how the game works versus how Dragon Crossing game mechanics work with that card. Right. Um, it's hard to explain. Did you look into any of the Dragonborn stuff at all? 
I haven't at all yet. Um, I haven't even played the game yet, so. Ah, uh, yeah. It's pretty fun. Not to detract from our Card Life Vanguard podcast, all that, but it's pretty cool. They, most roads definitely uh, taken steps with that game to make sure it doesn't turn out like Luck and Logic. And I'm hoping that they bring some of those changes over to Card Life, like the box they were using, the box change for Vanguard, and the way they're distributing Dragonborn. They're actually doing that to see which box style is better for selling their product that they're going to decide how to continue doing boxes after a few sets. The thing is that Yu-Gi-Oh has a huge following, and I, I really just despise that game down to the core, but it's because I hate the company Konami. I don't really hate the game, I hate the company. Yeah. They don't offer money, and their, their whole reasoning behind it is because they believe that if they offer a cash price, that that's gambling. Even though you can win a PlayStation, and the entire series is literally about gambling. <laughs>